What's up, everybody? We're the Three Amigos. My name is Nick. I'm Mike. And I'm Seth. That's right. Three Amigos are back, and we're back to talk about some more awesome games. And this time, we're going like timeline style. We're gonna go back into the past. Just back in the past, just a little bit. We're gonna... No one was alive. No one. I mean, there was no board games back then. It was no. the, the infancy <laughs> of board games, I think. We're going to the to the two thousands, the yeah. aughts. Uh, from 2000 to 2009, we're taking this decade and we're taking a look at some of our favorite games from from uh, the decade. Because you know what, you look back, you're like, oh, a lot of the classic games we play today are from that era. Yeah, there's They've a lot been around of... a while. Yeah, yeah. So that's Steph, what, what were you doing in the aughts? Oh man. Well, so I wasn't yet playing games. I started around 2010, right? Oh, and okay. uh, so I just came in after this and into the board game world, but I still have played. A ton of games from this time. Yeah, way more than anyone. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to go through uh, the entire decade. We looked at games from basically 2000, 2009, that 10 year span, and just picked our uh, 10 favorite games, made a joint list, and we're going to compare that to the top 10 ranked games on BGG from that entire decade. Uh, so, yeah, you ready, Steph? You ready to get into this? You're ready to go. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's go ahead and start off with BGG's number 10. Number 10 for Board Game Geek is ranked 77 overall, and it's coming in from Pretty 2005, good. and it's a big one. It's Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition. Third this edition. game was the thing for quite some time. Yeah. Only recently did the 4th Edition come out, so yeah. for a good long while, this was like... This was the the TI game. The giant know? space <laughs> You know, And a lot of time, I think a long time people didn't think TI4 would ever happen, so like, it's... it's uh, this was the definitive Twilight Imperium game. Now, I've played TI4... Yeah. TI three, from what I hear, is a completely different game. It's about farming. Yeah, I hear. Yeah. And so um, I, um, yeah, no, I played TI four. They're more or less the same game, from what I can tell. There's slight differences. Um, it was, uh, it was a game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's our collective type it's of not. game, but like obviously, it was Twilight Imperium is is highly revered. You'll yeah. see people at every convention like just sit over a table for hours, like making these giant epic games of yeah. it. It's super cool. It's it's yeah, it's fine. It's never gonna be my kind of game. It's too long, too much negotiation, all that kind of stuff. Steph, do you have any interest in ever playing a TI game? Uh not really, but it, it'll probably happen eventually and I'll you know right, you gotta try I, at I, least once. I gotta try at some point, right? Yeah. I, I'm right? similarly like res resolved of the fact that like someday it'll happen. <laughs> someday someday it's gonna happen. get like, me cornered, I'll be like, all right, I'll do it. And I'll probably have a good time. You probably will. But yeah. I'm not in a rush. I think you'll like it more than I do. Maybe, yeah. maybe. But either way, that's number 10 from Board Game Geek, ranked 77 overall, so still highly ranked, even from a game from 2005. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into our number 10. Our number 10 is similarly from 2005. It's called Vegas Showdown, coming in yes. at number 546. I know you guys love this game. I've seen you play it a few times, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's, I think the Nikki P special. The Nikki P loves this game. <laughs> yeah, if I correctly. It's fun. It's fun. It's really fun. Yeah, it's it's a game that suffers from just being really ugly, um, and questionable. And, uh, it's it's design. fairly ugly. That's true. <laughs> it's so ugly, but it's it's a really fun kind of bidding game where you're essentially you're building out. You have a everyone has their own hotel casino. Yep. And. Um, you basically are building out with tiles, and the tiles will be different things like slot machines and like poker tables and like different like restaurants and all this kind of stuff. And essentially, you have your hotel and your casino, and you're essentially trying to connect the two through these tiles, basically making a way for people to like walk through your hotel casino. Right. And all these tiles are out on the main board, and you're essentially bidding for them. And you're bidding them trying to get so it's a big bidding kind of auctioning game. Um, but it's really, really fun, and it just it just works well. I feel like it's a good Bidding, I feel like, can make people nervous sometimes because, like, bidding isn't confrontational, but it feels confrontational. You know what I mean? It can get that way, yeah. Yeah, you know, and this one is it's really, really smooth, and it's just really, really nice. Uh, and I think it really suffers from the fact that it just it is older. It looks really old. It looked old for the time. <laughs> it shows its age, for sure, based on the look, yeah. Like, the, your hotel casino is on a paper mat, but the paper mat to fit in the box has to be folded. So it's literally got a massive crease in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's horrendous. And again, it's just a place to put your tiles, but it's just like, at least do like cardstock. Like, it's yeah. paper. <laughs> and it's, it's one of those things where I really think if, if a publisher picked up this game, not even like did like a deluxe version, just made it to like the standard of today. Not anything special, just the standard of today. I think it would do really well. Yeah. But no one has. But it's a really fun game, and, yeah. and it's uh, it's really really great. It's just 
Yeah, it's horrendous looking. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so been fun. a thousand years since I've played this, and I remember enjoying it well enough. I just haven't ever brought it back to the table after that, so I should. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, one of the things fun. that might hold it back. It's we're in the same boat of like we have we don't come back to it often for that reason. And it's like, also three player minimum, which yeah, oh, for like someone like us, yeah. well, there's usually two of us. Which that's you a also big... want for a bidding game. You want to have people to yeah, bid. Right. You know, I've been but... four. I've been five. Yeah. Well, okay, that was it. That was fun. Okay, cool. Well, I, yeah. I definitely so, wish there were more auction games out there, like coming out these days. You don't really see that very often right now. That's very true. It's yeah. not the yeah. It's like they're they're not as uh, prolific of a game style yeah, as others. Sadly. But hey, <laughs> too bad. Either way, Vegas Showdown is a good one if you don't mind the kind of the older look. Uh, it does show its two thousand five ness just a hair. <laughs> sure does man. Um, yeah, but uh, it's really tips, good. That's know? why it's our number ten. Yeah. Let's jump into Board Game Geeks number nine. <laughs> All right, so Kayless is number nine from Board Game Geek. It's 74 overall, and again, from 2005. 2005 was a year. I get Kayless and Cyclades mixed up. Okay, Cyclades is very different. Okay. Yeah, I hear they're not the same game. <laughs> well, Steph, you do know what Kayless is, so help us uh, clear the air here. Well, I mean, it's one of those, like, pretty brutal Euro games. And so when I first played it, it was actually over uh, when I first met you guys at same con, and um, oh. everybody really likes this game, or a lot of people like this game. And I'm probably in the minority that really don't like this game. It's, it's, it's really brutal. You're trying to, like, move up your pathway and, like, get these buildings and stuff and but everything you're doing this is like painful <laughs> it's like one of these really That's painful funny. euros and it's long and it's just like oh my god <laughs> maybe this was just my experience but oh my no, god there are, those, there are people who out there who love those like just they want to work for yeah them. they want to hurt you know during it and it's like yeah, that's not my style of game. Yeah, but I do, I do appreciate that some people like that's like they want that. They want that pain. They want to like, grind it. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah and so I can appreciate that. That's fine. But for me, yeah. the overall feeling of like dread the whole game, and it's like three hour <laughs> experience. It just was like a, a little bit numb, like for me. Yeah. So that's yeah, cool. not guess, really a game I want to re revisit. I guess life is meaningless, you know, whatever. Okay, cool, cool, good. That's good enough. But I have four points, so that's <laughs> that's nice. I can, I can keep the memory of all that work I did for nothing. <laughs> Candy was in my game with me, and she was just like, I like this game. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry I hate this game. <laughs> I know, right? You're like, I don't want to play You hate to be, uh, you hate to be yeah, going right? to bring it down. You're like, that wasn't for that me. That's so okay. And someone's like, oh, I want to play this game. You're like, I hate I tell them? I should tell them. Now I know. <laughs> it was the one time I've ever played it, but now I know. Clearly, we are in the minority because a lot of people do like Kalis. They do? 74 yes. over all of the board games it's ranked. Uh, all of them. And it's from all those years ago. So, yeah. uh, Kalis is number nine for Board Game Geek. Not bad, not Kalis. Bad, not Don't bad. listen to us. There's plenty of people who can love it uh, instead of us. That's great. But in the meantime, we'll get into our number nine. Our number nine is from 2009 and cranks, what's it, 2301 overall. So it's pretty, not great, but it's not bad, right? So it's called A Brief History of the World. Now, there's been several versions of History of the World, Brief History of the World, and History of the World again. And uh, and I really like this one, guys. And I, I, you probably haven't played it. It's not very familiar, but it's, it, it's one of those kind of games, much like Small World, where you are living turn by turn and hopefully you know you'll make your position better on a map and so you're really going with what you're given and hopefully nobody destroys what you've got going on <laughs> <laughs> and ideally ideally and so you're playing a number of rounds each round you'll get a new nation a new a new objective and a power that you get so your nations will live on the board for one round or longer if they happen to survive longer if nobody goes in and attacks it, but you can't like grow a nation from round to round. So that's what's interesting okay. about this game is that you know you're 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 working with the map, you're working with what people are doing, trying to knock them out, and you you score after each of your turns. So if you can get a back to back turn, for example, and end of round one into beginning of round two, you might score really big because nobody's had a chance to knock you out. Um, so I see. Yeah. So you're just trying to like control this map the best you can, and uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Yeah, I love that idea thematically. Like you said, it's the history of the world, so you don't have time <laughs> round around to be the same nation because you've already you've moved forward. There's yeah, new yeah. people now here, Dude, and so times. you're just. Uh, I love the idea that you have to keep progressing forward. It's a cool way to integrate the idea of sort of time 
in with the, me the, me the mechanisms and have that kind of be that's like, here's a new nation, they do this. Yeah, here's on, a new technology, yeah, you know, gunfire, yeah, cannons, yeah. and things we're, we're like just, this. And... We're just catapulting to the future always. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's really cool. It's really cool. Awesome. All well, right. that's why it's our number nine. Yay. Yeah. All right. Brief history of the world, history of the world, uh, history of the world abridged, uh, whichever yeah. version. All the history, history of the world. world. The All history the of the world of bridges. <laughs> yeah, that's also good. Nice. History also of good. bridge, the game. <laughs> It's a game that you can play to teach you how to play bridge. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's what it is. Anyway, that's our number nine, everybody. Let's go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number eight. So number eight for Board Game Geek is ranked 57 overall. A classic through and through from 2007. It is Race for the Galaxy. Yeah, people love Race for the Galaxy. There's, they love it so much. There's Race for the Galaxy. There's Roll for the Galaxy. There's New Frontiers, which is a Race for the Galaxy game. There's all sorts of Race for the Galaxy yes. stuff out there. Uh, I personally have played Roll for the Galaxy and New Frontiers yeah, and things. You really love New Frontiers. There's a lot so. of overlap uh, of you're trying to uh, discover places, uh, settle, develop technologies all in space. But they have this cool um, mechanic where if I choose an action, I'm going to get an action that everyone's going to get to do as well, but I'll get a better version of that action. I'll get some sort of bonus. I'll get some sort of discount. And that's a really fun thing yeah. to play with. The kind of everyone gets to follow. So, uh, you know, I don't want to necessarily uh, just give something that everyone else is going to make great use of, but I can also get this cool bonus that no yeah. one else gets. It's very juicy and very fun. Um, have y'all played Race for Rolls or any of those types <laughs> of games? I played Roll and I liked it. And we've played New Frontiers. I liked it. I've never actually played Race. Have you played Race, Steph? I haven't played the class. So, uh, it's kind of a funny story. It was like right when I was getting into gaming. They tried to, somebody tried to throw a race at me. And it was just, it was mind bent backwards. And I just couldn't, I didn't, it just didn't make sense. And I didn't enjoy the experience. So, I haven't really returned to it. Now, it, it is funny. I should go back and play it again. Because, obviously, I really like Roll. Um, and, and a lot mm -hmm. of the other race games out there, like Jump Drive and stuff. And, and so, you know, it's one, I, it's one that I should definitely try playing again because a lot of my friends love this game and play it a lot. So, you know, right. you got to give it that second yeah. chance. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, really though. I, I, I get that. I know that people do kind of fall into some camps. Like some people love Race for the Galaxy. Other people really love Roll for the Galaxy. Me personally, like I said, I, I love New Frontiers. But there is a lot of overlap between them. So I feel like if you like one, like you'll probably at least enjoy one of the other versions. Yeah. You may, maybe you'll kind of lean one way or another. I do but... like dice. So there is that. It's yeah. very sad. You get your nice. scissory, you get your cup going. I mean, yeah. it's hard Bam. to beat. And it's quick, too. I yeah, that's like me. The they're all, they're all fast, which I really like about it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Roll for Galaxy is, or sorry, Race for the Galaxy is uh, <laughs> the game that kicked off all of the Galaxy games. That's uh, true. And that is number eight for Board Game Geeks. So let's go ahead and get into our number eight. Our number eight comes in at 2.52 from 20, no, yeah, 2009, 2009, I don't know, I'm like 20, 2009, nope, let me try that again, <laughs> 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 and uh, it is a small world. So, Small yes. world, you know. We were just talking about, we're talking uh, about history of the world, yeah. Right, and so uh, like history of the world, so small world, you're sort of taking a fantastical race. They'll get some sort of randomized power that creates fun combinations. Uh, and you're trying to go and kind of take over different areas of the map that have different land types that maybe will give you bonuses or perks depending on uh, the type of race you are. Mm -hmm. uh, and you are trying to control as much of this small map as you can. At the end of every turn, for every area you control, you'll get points and stuff, and you might get some bonuses. But at some point, your your race will have, they'll have spread out as far yeah. as they can go. You have a limited amount of troops, and so yeah. like eventually you'll basically run out. Because one thing I really like about Small World is it, it's very, very straightforward. Like, to take over an empty territory is takes two of your troops. Yeah. If there's anything in there, it takes one more for every new tile in there. So if there's like one of my troops in there, it'll take two for the territory plus one to take over his person. If there's a mountain, it takes one extra one. So it's very easy to figure out exactly how much it... it uh, the math is simple. Yeah, it's right. very, very simple. It's very, very easy. And it's just it's a lot of area control games, particularly when you're playing with new people, are kind of tough because area control can feel kind of like head buddy you because like you're taking each other over constantly yeah but small world always just feels like the world's just small like that's the entire purpose of the game is just to spread out as far as you can so it feels really impersonal 
Um, yeah. And I, I really, really like that about Small World a lot. Yeah, because at some point you're going to, like I said, uh, you're going to either kind of get wiped out or you'll have stretched out as far as you can. So you can send your race into decline and start a new race, yeah. get a whole new set of troops, and then go out and kind of uh, spread out once out again. again yeah. and, and kind of like uh, History of the World, you might have your old race still on the map for some amount of time and they'll still score points as long as they're there, but they're not going to do anything else. So they could get kind of get wiped yeah. out. So it's about kind of figuring out, like, when do I switch and get this new race with these new powers and stuff. Uh, and some of the combinations that you'll get between those two are really interesting or might provide really strange opportunities. Yeah. Um, that's what I just enjoy. It's just sort of that whole, like, what do I do with the options here available to me? How do I make best use of this as possible? Yeah, yeah I actually yeah. really like this game and I like what they've done with it over the years, bringing out all these different variations and extras and expansions and everything like that to keep the game fresh and interesting. And now I know recently there was like, Small World of Warcraft, which looks really oh. interesting, which I haven't had a chance to try yet, but um, yeah, another week. <laughs> but it looks really cool. Different maps, different islands that you try and like go out and do things and claim territories. And if, as for, as far as area control games go, this is probably one of my favorites in the genre of like you know history of the world and all that stuff. Just because I'm not really big on the area control, like you said, but it is yeah, it is easier to understand. And try and do your thing in this game than, than a lot of other area control games. <laughs> yeah. It's just smooth, right? It's, yeah. Just, it's, just, it's just simple. It's, it's just, it doesn't get too bogged down with itself. But like you said, there's been so many expansions, so many. So now you just, if you got any of those expansions, you'll have so many combinations possible of a race and a power. It just creates, it's, yeah, you'll never play the fun. same game like, twice. Oh, those are flying dwarves now. Like, that's, that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> why not? You know, it's like, yeah, it's it's just it's just silly fun. It's great. Yeah, and I think that's why it's done so well over the years. Yeah, I mean, and that's why it's on our, green. Yeah, yeah, that's why it's on our list at number eight. It's yeah. just a uh, fun, streamlined area control. Yeah. This kind of the area control game for for me anyway. So uh, that is Small World. And let's get into Board Game Geeks number seven. Number seven from Board Game Geek is ranked 47 overall from 2008 is Lahav. Yeah. Another in the great big. Which of course means I have. I have. To I have, have fish. To possess. Yes. Lots of meanings. Lots of meanings. Uh, Lahav or the Harbor uh, is uh, a big Uwe Rosenberg game uh, where you're in a harbor and you're trading goods, moving things, building buildings, building ships. So many things. Yeah. And it kind of breaks my head a little bit. It's a little bit. Yeah, I know, I know Steph, you love this game. You're right? our expert, Steph, so break it down. this one brief, because we're maybe going to talk we're about it. We're probably going to talk about it, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it. anything of Rosenberg, right? I love, love, love. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, th this one's really interesting, because you're, like, trying to build these buildings, but you're using any building you want. So if I build a building, you can use it, but you have to pay me. So... Uh, getting the resources you need to try and advance yourself with like boats and shipping goods and using getting these buildings that all get you end game points, right? So you're just trying to collect as much money by the end of the game. And each round is very different because you, you're you, you're only doing a few actions each round. That's why I think this game is probably best with three players or two players. But um, because uh, if you play with more than that, you're gonna get like one action around. So, but the, but the, but the feeding right. cost at the end of the round will be a little bit smaller than if you were playing with more, fewer people. So the more actions you get in the round, the, the heavier the feeding cost at the end of the round. So you're trying to like feed your people and keep everybody happy and keep your like little economy going. <laughs> so there's just yeah. a lot going on. Love it. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk more about it uh, maybe in a okay. little bit, but uh, there yeah. is a lot of really cool stuff with the idea yeah. of, of buildings and things. But that for now is Lahab. It is uh, Board Game Geeks number seven, uh, 2BD on where it shows 2BD, up on our list. 2BD, huh? 2BD, yeah. 2BD. It's 2021 number now. Number two, a B like an insect. Yeah, like a little drawing. And then just a letter D. And then a D, like the D, just yeah. the, the letter. <laughs> yeah. That's how I'm doing it. Folks, that's number seven number uh, from seven. Board Game Geek. Let's get into our number seven. Our number seven is 179 overall from 2000. And this is Carcassonne. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's the the classic. classic. It's a classic. Right? Like, How could it not be on the list, right? It's so good. Absolutely. It really is. It's just so simple. It's it's our kind of go-to gateway game. If we had to choose one, we'd probably choose Carcassonne. It's just, it just works. It's easy. It's simple. You're building out paths. You're building out cities. You're getting in each other's way. 
it just works. It's so good to like teach new people because it like the game starts off as one tile and then by the end of it, it's gonna be this massive land. thing, yeah. And every single time it's gonna be completely different because you don't know what's coming out when and it's just, I don't know, I'm, I've, it's satisfying. I'm forever, so yeah, good. I'm forever yeah, charmed by very this game. Sad. I think that's the word, satisfying. Because yeah. it all makes sense. Yes. It's very nice. Yeah. yeah. And it kind of works that, it, that came out in 2000. Because to me, like, it ushered in this new era of board gaming. Carcassonne. Like, whoa, yes. this is perfect. There's a whole new world now. <laughs> yeah. And then it led to a great 20 plus years of games. <sighs> the best 20 plus years of games ever. Yeah. Said it. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Carcassonne. Y'all know it, I think. Well, well I mean, play yeah. It. Everybody needs to play it if you haven't played it. That's all. <laughs> gotta yeah, you got to play it at least once. It'll yeah. take 20 minutes. Go for it. Yeah. It's simple. It's great. Satisfying. Yeah. It, I think it, it satisfies all of our need for logic. Yes. And order. Yes. The cities must be in the cities and they're complete and they have walls and it's pretty. But a little, everything has a little bow put on it by the end of it when it scores. It's just nice. I like that. We need yep. that. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's nice and orderly. It's great uh, tile so placement. Is, so just play it. Just I know. Just play it. Just, just play it. It's just play it. Game. You'll love it. Play You'll love the game. It. Uh, <laughs> that's why it's on our list at number seven, Carcassonne. I mean, the classic, the yeah. classic gateway game. Uh, and so it's great. We love it. We'll continue to love it forever. And that's why it's seven. We're going to jump into Board Game Geeks number six. So Board Game Geeks number six is ranked 40 overall all the way back from 2006 this is through the ages a story of civilization so this is the not a new story of civilization right they've kind of gone through a new edition more recently the but old story of it's the original through the ages that kind of blew up a big civ game uh that takes a lot of those those like computer games and stuff and then puts it into yeah. a tableau builder and just like those computer games it's better digital <laughs> i <laughs> play it digitally through the ages digitally yes because it's just Takes through care of all of your bookkeeping. Has gotten me through so many plane rides. I know. <laughs> Love it so much, but I have no interest in playing this game physically. I want the I do want to done. Do it. I, I, you do. I, you can go play. I'll play something. I else. might not ever want to do it again, but I do want to do it. But Through the Ages is a giant game where you are building up a civilization, going through different eras, moving forward in time, starting in kind of antiquity and up to modern times. Uh, and you're going to be building out these cards in front of you that will give you various types of production. You can produce food, which helps you get, grow your population and feed your people. You can produce uh, kind of building materials, which is how you build all of your cards. You can produce science. You can produce uh, uh, culture, which is your victory points. Uh, you need to keep your people happy, so you need to have uh, different cards in front of you like religion or entertainment, uh, like the opera and whatnot, that will give you happiness and culture. Uh, and so it's just this big multi-engine building game that I just love. Yeah. I haven't played this version, but I imagine it's fairly similar to the, the yeah. newer version. Steph, you liked uh, Through the Ages? Um, yeah, it's, it's okay. Fair. I'm the lone lover of this Fair. game. I, like me, it's I, okay. like... I, I I I learned it. I played it a few times, but it's just it's it's a big game that you know it. If you don't grow with someone and learning it, maybe the app would be better for me just so I could like get to that level of what people people who love it love it, right? So yes. right, they're gonna right. know the cards. I mean, I got kind of hosed with cards because I didn't know them, and it just it kind of leaves me feeling like, oh wow, that all for nothing, right? Like yeah, right, right. Um, and I haven't played the app, so I'm, I'm guessing yeah. I would. And I like, like the this app game. More, so. I just like yeah. it digitally because i yeah. want all the bookkeeping done for me like yeah. i really like this game i just don't have any interest in playing the physical board game of it which is like okay then to me it's just a video game i guess but it's just like i, I just i have no interest in like i can play in 30 minutes it's great yeah like i have no interest in it playing physically it's just just how yeah it is but stuff you make a good point about like the cards and having knowledge of what each card does the types of cards which ones might be a little bit juicier and and more uh quick to be taken and things is important and there's the only reason I know those things is because I've played hundreds of games on the yeah, app yeah. and it's taken that much time. So I, I understand what you're saying about like, yeah. you, you could probably get pretty beat up pretty good in your first couple of games just because you don't know what's out there or why it's good. Right. And that's fine. I don't mind when I'm first learning something, but it still leaves you a little bit like, well, we've been playing this for how long? And like, yeah, this that's, is like, <laughs> that's the real talk. This one, this yeah. one card just ruined me. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's yeah. very fair. But anyway, through the ages, uh, it even is great. the older version is still highly regarded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so it's 45 all the way back from 2006. Yeah. Uh, and that is Board Game Geeks number six, speaking of. So let's go ahead and jump into our number six. Our number six is 135 overall from 2009 called Jaipur. 
Two player card games, hard to beat. I just love two player games. Yeah. This one is just just wonderfully simple. You're kind of doing set collection. Yeah. Sort of drafting cards from the middle. It's great. Yeah, it's I mean it really is. It's just a simple little two player game. It was one of the first like two player only games we ever played. Might have been the first uh, one. It might have yeah. been the first one at a board game cafe. And it was like we'd never heard of the concept of like two player only board games. And now <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, that makes sense because a lot of people play two player, but sure. it's like at the time we had never seen that before. And we were like, why is this? You can only play this at two player. Like that's interesting, and the owner of the game cafe is like, "Yeah, it's really, really good." So we played it. We were just like, "This is great!" This and it is was charming. It's, yeah, it's just charming. Yeah, it's like set collection. You're trying to collect these gems, um, and you're basically it's 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 nice and quick. And a lot of it is basically just trying to not set up your opponent, right? Uh, and because you're collecting cards from the middle, and so if you see your opponent is trying to collect a lot of one of these, you don't want to put those in the middle because then they can collect them to then turn them in for gems and stuff like that. It's very, very simple. You're you're um, almost always playing like a best of three games because they're very, very quick. But it's just like two-player little card game set collection. Like, I'm there. And it really kind of ushered in the whole like, wow, this is... And then you find out about games like, you know, Star Wars Rebellion, which are massive games yeah. two-player. But it's like... But first, we were just like, wow, what a this concept. <laughs> like, so that's uh, our number six in Jaipur. It's fantastic. Card game, simple. Overpriced, but good. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> so with that, we'll jump into Board Game Geeks number five. So number five from Board Game Geek is ranked 38 overall from 2004. A classic Power Grid. Power Grid's great. Ooh, Power Grid's fantastic. Uh, it's a game where you're going to be auctioning off power plants every round. You're trying to power... Uh, whatever country map you're on, there's many maps at this point, but America, or Germany and stuff, and you're trying to power different cities. You want to be able to power the most cities to ultimately win the game. You can be doing this through power plants that might require different types of materials like uh, oil and coal to start. You might be able to start burning trash, get some plutonium or uranium. It's a renewable source. Go nuclear, energy, ultimately. Yeah. You can have renewable energy and stuff that don't require any materials as well uh, at all. And uh, you are trying to then take your money, build a kind of basically power plants in different cities and then uh, power cities to gain money and then kind of go and use that money to buy more power plants, to buy more materials, to put more buildings out onto the board and then power and on and on and kind of build up this engine. And then ultimately at the end of the game, no matter how many buildings you have out, on the map, it's whoever powers the most that can win. So you need to have those better power plants. Yeah. So you'll kind of be cycling out, you know, some of the lesser power plants for more strong power plants. Uh, but it's just great. It just works. Yeah, it works. Uh, Steph, you like this game? Yeah, I think it's probably my favorite uh, Friedman Freeze game. So there's, okay. there's okay. that. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Hey, there's a lot you know, of them. I mean, it is, it is. The he's, best. he's had many good games over the years, but this is like the gold the standard. Highest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, know. it's it's great. It's just like. Yeah, it just works. It's a game that we didn't try for a long time because we're kind of like, whatever. And then we finally tried it and we're like, oh, no, this is really, really good. Yeah, I like Power Grid a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's, I think been it's been a fantastic. thousand years since I've played it, but I should play it again too. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. It's, it's one of those things that like, uh, you know, we don't play it all the time, but if someone's like, hey, you want to play Power Grid? I'd be like, yeah, super yeah. down, super down. It's one that I was actually surprised at how simple it was once we got going. Yeah. Because I kind of heard, like, you have to do arithmetic. You have to add up and you're spending money and stuff to figure out how much everything costs. But it's not that complicated of a game. So it's like, oh, that's that's yeah. awesome. You yeah. know, uh, Power Grid, again, classic. Been around forever. It's been very well supported throughout the years. There's been many versions and, and uh, expansions and things. Uh, and that's why it's number five after all these years, 38 yeah. overall. Uh, but we got number five. So let's hop into it. Our number five is 562 overall from 2009 called Shipyard. Ship. I'm a big fan of this game. And uh, if you are a fan of rondelles at all, uh, this this is great. <laughs> and a rondelle is where you are moving your pawn around, collecting different things as you go. And so, you know, everything will come around again in theory. <laughs> <laughs> and you're trying to collect these different ship parts and you're trying to map out your path where your ship is going to go and you're collecting these things like ornaments for your ships like lanterns or cabins or these different things so you can score some points at the end of the game and during your travels and you're going to collect your captain and some crew members and all these different things so you're trying to do it all <laughs> and uh the whole game is basically a rondelle where you're selecting actions and going around. And as you take something, you move it up to the front of the line. 
And so you're sitting on that spot, so nobody else can take that action. Right? So it is a action selection kind of game, but people are going to be sitting on spaces you want to take. So yeah. uh, as you go, these are going to be moving around. And if you take something that's way in the back, maybe you'll get a little bonus because nobody wants that one. So you get a couple extra bucks and stuff like that. So timing is everything. Doing what people don't want to do is usually to your benefit. So you're going to try and work around all these different things. Um, I yeah. like that idea of... Uh you know, kind of like worker placements that you, you're going to be blocking an action space, but the fact you're kind of going around and around means you might come back around to it and now it'll be open. But how much do you put your whole plan on this one yeah. action knowing that it's like, I can't control yeah. when it's open because other people might want that spot. Well, you can to an extent because you are going around in clockwise order. So as soon as you know, if I if you're following me and I I was just on that space, you know you can take that space next turn because I have to move off. That's, good that's point, a good yeah. point. Yeah. So again, so you, you said how do you time that. it out? <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah, that's super cool, and I love that idea of kind of building up all the different elements you need of a ship. It's cool. I, I always enjoy games. There's not many words like it's kind of specific about the yeah. building. It's like you're gonna build this thing, uh, and all the elements that go into it makes for I think kind of a cool yeah. focus to a game. Yeah. It's really, uh, so really great. shipyard. Check it yeah, out. Ship, check it out today, <laughs> folks. Shipyard right now. It's hour number five, so that means it's pretty good. That's a that's a guarantee of a good time if you play it. Anything from five and above is just a, a good time guarantee. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> that's just from the three amigos. So let's get into Board Game Geeks number four right now. So number four from Board Game Geek is ranked 31 overall from 2007. It is Agricola. Never heard of it. Never I heard of it. <laughs> I officially want to try Agricola because every yeah? other game I've played, I've really, really liked, and I've just never had any interest in playing Agricola. <laughs> but I'm like, I like every other Uve game, so I should probably just try it. Uh, here's the thing. We we have played many other Uve Rosenberg games and stuff, and we like those. Agricola is a good game. Yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. It's not a bad game. It would not be the classic that it is if it wasn't a good game. But we do also, the flip side of that, we do also have like Caverna and Feast for Odin. Yeah, and you know, it's, uh, Fields are all these other things. So yeah, so Seth, we haven't played Agricola. Have you played Agricola? Long ago. I've only played it once. And for someone like me who loves Uber Rosenberg games, I should probably give it another go. But again, right? it's, one, it's one of those situations where people know the cards and you get hammered on. <laughs> That's fair. With a lot of those games, like Caverna, I think, falls in this as well. There's so many building types. And if you have familiarity with what's going on, it's going to be a pretty big leg up. Yeah, it's going to be a thing. <laughs> well, so with something yeah. like Caverna, everything's always out in the open. So, yeah, if you know the buildings, that helps. But also, when I play and teach new people Caverna, I try and do something I haven't done before um, yeah, to see if I can do that and kind of point people in the direction of this might be good because X, Y, Z. So, yeah. I don't know. I teach games differently, I suppose, than a lot of other people. But with Agricola, you're going to get dealt some cards. And uh, I guess you could do a draft system, but when you're new and you don't know the cards and you don't know what to keep, what to yeah. pass, it makes it really hard because those are your cards for like the game, right? So it's like, yeah, it, it can be tough and uh, it, it can be very punishing because you are feeding and it's really hard to get the food versus something, you know, uh, uh, his other games are a little more lenient on how to feed, right? You're, you're, it's easier to get things. Uh, Agricola is very, very harsh when it comes to feeding, so. Yeah, right. that's what I've always heard. Yeah, but it's like, it's one of the things that if we gave it a go, since I'm we sure haven't fine. played it, I'm sure we'll enjoy it. I need to play we... it again, yeah. I think it's yeah, that you it, should yeah. play it, right? I mean. Yeah, yeah. It's should. a classic. classic. You know, it's from a designer that we enjoy. Yes. But we just got to know what we're getting into. Yeah, yes. that's really what it is. Yes. Yeah, yeah so that's Rickola. Yes. That's number four, four from Board Game Geek. Give it a go if you haven't. We should, we'll follow our own advice on that. In the meantime, we'll get into our number four. Our number four is 109 overall from 2008. Did I get that right? Yes. Called Stone Age. Stone Age. <laughs> Guys, I just learned this last year because you said to play it. And I said, all right. You said, fine. And what do you think? I like it. It's fine. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's yeah, classic. I like, I like it. It's, 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 it's like, it's not our favorite, like, worker placement game. It's not our favorite game ever, but it's just so classic. <laughs> yeah. That it's just got to be up on our list. I mean, I, I, I do, I, I play it and I'm like, that was just very, very, very enjoyable, you know? And it's right. uh, it's not blowing anyone's hair back, especially nowadays where there's so many more games out there. But it's like, yeah, it's just great. It's like you're kind of just building out your family, clan, whatever, tribe, you know? yeah, whatever. 
And and it's I, one thing I like about the game is we talk about it has a very nice thematic progression where it's like in the very beginning, like you have to like so much of your time is just spent trying to get food. Because you have right. to feed your people and you can only spend survive. a little bit of time doing other sp- stuff. But as you progress, getting food becomes easier and easier and easier for you. So then you can start spending your workers to then go do other stuff. So it's a kind of really nice thematic thing where it's like, yeah, when you start off, your tribe doesn't have anything other than like you just you have to spend all your time eating and trying to feed yourselves. And then like as you advance in time, you then get better and better and better. So now you're like, oh, I now I can have I can spend like a couple people going to go get food. But then our agriculture does everything else. And now I can spend all these people to try to go build buildings and all this kind of and stuff. Tools. And it just works. It feels good. It's it's nice. It's classic. It's a great kind of intro worker placement game if you want to um, introduce someone to the kind of the mechanic. And it's just, I don't know, I love it. Yeah. It's great. It's got dice rolling, so it's familiar there. And yeah. it's just fun. Yeah, it's just fun to collect some resources and go buy some buildings, get get some big dumps of points, yeah. some set collections. It's kind of like a little bit of everything in that game. Yeah. That's classic. So it's from the Stone Age of board gaming. Yeah. So that's why I had to add on this list. That's right. We had to. It's, uh, it's only Stone appropriate. Yeah. yeah. It's our number four. So let's go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number three. So number three from Board Game Geek is uh, ranked 27 overall. It's yeah. all the way back from 2000. It used to be number one for a long time, if I, if I remember correctly. I maybe yeah. it was. It's Puerto Rico. Mm. Puerto Rico is a, a game that I've not played. No. Because uh, there, there's a... I just never had an interest in Puerto Rico, and as times have gone by, and people, a lot of other games have used like the Puerto Rico system, which is kind of like New Frontiers just does that a lot, where it's like yeah, the follow, the constants, like you choose an action, and then everyone else gets to do like essentially a lesser version of that action. Sure. So like I've just now that like a lot more games do that kind of stuff. I've always just been like, eh, I just have no interest in playing Puerto Rico at same. all. You played yeah. it, Steph? Yeah, I mean, so I fell into the the trap where, oh, BGG's top 100, I got to get this number one game. It was the number one at the time. Yeah, and so yeah. I bought it, and I played it several times. But ultimately, it, it's, it didn't end up being a keeper for me. So, yeah, I mean, I can see why people love it. Um, so if I select an action, you guys get a lesser action of that type sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, you're just it's just so ugly, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's dated. It's dated. Yeah, I don't like it love the theme dated. and stuff. So yeah, like, it's I fine. love the mechanism though. So now that you have kind of the race yeah, of the galaxy like, type games, play I'm like, Puerto I'll Rico, just yeah. play around in space and because the the mechanisms of the follow is really cool. Yeah, it's a very, very cool. There's like there's a lot of lot of games that do that now. So I'm kinda yeah. like, yeah, like like yeah, I just I've never had much interest in playing it. Still don't. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> it, 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 it's probably worth playing just because to see. I mean, sure, you know, it's, you're trying to get the buildings and, and produce and do all the things, you know. It, yeah. It, it's solid. Yeah. It's, it's, it's worth playing, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right on. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's Puerto Rico's number three, still twenty seven. I mean, it's former still, number one. It has not fallen off the face nah, of the earth. It really has certainly. Not. So yeah, uh, it is a classic from two thousand two. So let's go ahead and jump into our number three. Our number three is 1389 overall from 2003 called De Steven Seagal. I call it Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal. I I don't really know. But it's also called Slough Off, uh, Wizard Extreme. It has lots of different names over the years. But um, so it's a fantastic trick-taking game if you guys like card games. Um, And so this game works best at five players. So you don't really want to have fewer than five, which is great. So I'm always looking for interesting five-player games, right? And what you're going to be doing is you you look at your hand of cards, and you have to try and guess which tricks you're going to win. So if you think you're going to win a blue trick, you take a blue token. And once you win the blue trick, you you get rid of your blue token. So you're trying to get up with a net zero, right? So if you have leftover tokens, they're going to be negative points. Or if you take a trick you're not supposed to, you're going to get an even bigger negative token. And so so you're trying to play off what other people are doing. Somebody can be the, I don't know what it's called in in the actual game, but we have a Steven Seagal stand because that's what we do. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, so you can be this guy. And hand out the bad tokens, and you're trying to throw everybody off, right? So if you get to be this, like, like uh, a traitor sort of situation where, you know, oh, you think you're winning that? No, I'm going to win that. <laughs> so then they, they get leftover tokens, if you will. Or try and make it so somebody takes a trick they're not supposed to. And so you kind of, like, 
you're trying to like throw the game a little bit, uh, being this this person, and that that's usually really good if you have like a like a hand that allows for it, <laughs> you know. And, right, um, right. And so it's just a trick taking game where you know if you like card games, I, this is definitely one that you want to check out. Um, so I I that's really some... love it. We've always played it if we have five players. So. Yeah, yeah it seems to have cool. some really fun elements to it. Mm-hmm. I, I I enjoy that. I mean, like in general, that's what I like about trick taking games. There's so many ways that you can twist them up and do yeah. uh, something slightly different with it, but the kind of base of like how trick taking works remains pretty much the same. But yeah. I like the idea of like really based off your cards, like what do you think you can do with these cards and try to like really nail that down perfectly yeah. is very cool yes uh so very that's cool. slup off or steven seagal which is the only <laughs> way i want to refer ever to that game yeah. the, yeah. the steven seagal this is i don't know but we call it steven seagal and there's steven seagal quotes inside so <laughs> that's so <laughs> awesome so that's our number three from the three amigos we have a couple more so let's get into board game geeks number two So number two is Brass Lancashire, which is number 19 overall from 2007. Yeah. I didn't realize that this particular version was so old. For some reason, in my head, I always think it's a newer version. But it's Well, it's because the they around. redid it. Yeah. They did redid it. Redid, redid the old version. They also have Brass Birmingham, which is... I, I've never played Lancashire. I've played Birmingham. Right. And from what I understand, they're very, very similar. There are some slight differences between the two of them. But this is like... the Brass Lancashire is the original Brass. Right. Which right. I think it was I just was... called Brass. But... um. Yeah, Brass is a game. <laughs> brass is a game. Like I said, we've played Brass Birmingham. I don't know, Seth, have you played Lancashire specifically? Or no, any of the brass I haven't games? played them. I've been a bit scared. <laughs> yeah, we so we played uh, Brass Birmingham uh, once, and it was uh, it was intense. It was it was it was heavy. It was hard. Yep. It was. Uh, I did not do well. I, <laughs> I was producing beer, which I think is something specific to Birmingham. That is, and like, I think so, yes. People are shipping things around, but I was like producing all the stuff and people are like, oh, cool, I'm going to use that. And I was like, wait, but you're not going to produce beer as well? And it was like, no, why would I? I have yours. And I was like, oh, oh I made a mistake. Yeah. Uh, so I just got destroyed. I do want to come back to the brass games, but... Um, they're hard. They're tough. They're I'll tough play them tough. eventually. It's my motto, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, nothing's like out. It's just like yeah. it's just it's I down try the line. I didn't. I didn't really like it when I play. I, I I I keep wanting to like Martin Wallace games, and I don't like any of the ones I've played. It hasn't so, been the designer. No, it has not. Despite the fact that I always think I'm gonna like them, and so I want to try Brass Bur- or either Brass, honestly. But I've played Birmingham before. I'd like to try it again because I'm just like I. It's like every Martin Wallace game, like. I should like this. I want to like this, but I don't. So with Martin Wallace, he's had like a lot of misses in the in the most recent years. So you kind of came in at like his like weak point, right? And so yeah, I, guess, yeah. I mean, he's got a lot of strong games from earlier. Um, and actually, Anno was actually pretty good. So whenever you get the chance to play that new Anno game, I think you'll like. Okay. Okay. Like it. So yeah. It's got to be selective, I guess. I got to yeah, keep trying. I'm gonna find selective. a Martin Wallace game I like. Dang it! I'm yeah. gonna do it. You no, will. You will. <laughs> The people enjoy Martin Wallace. Yes. Uh, clearly, like Martin Wallace is highly regarded in the hobby. The folks at Board Game Geek, uh, all you users out there, uh, enjoy Martin Wallace, and that's great. Uh, so Brass Lancashire is number 19 overall, all the way back from 2007. Yeah. Uh, we have a number two, though, so let's hop into it right now. Our number two is 152 overall from 2007. Um, and it's called Ticket to Ride Nordic. So we chose Nordic Country, really, but choose a Ticket to Ride. The Ticket honestly, to Rides yeah, like... in general came out during this decade, so it's really this decade was a celebration of all things Ticket yeah. to Ride. We enjoy Nordic Country specifically. It's one of the it's a standalone version of the yeah. game. There's also Ticket to Ride, the base game. There's many expansions that just have different maps. But Ticket to Ride Nordic Countries takes place in kind of the Scandinavian countries, which is where our family is from. So it's kind of fun to have that it tie to fun. it. And it's a two to three player specific version of Ticket to Ride. Yes. So it's a little bit of a tighter map. Uh, and there's some cool things. There's a lot of, uh, you need locomotives and stuff to, to yeah, kind of move the around. got tunnels and ferries and stuff that it shows. Tunnels up. and ferries. The main thing is, it's like, it's, it's two to three player only. And we usually play games two player, maybe three player. So it's perfect. So it's perfect because that's one thing is like playing on the big map like Europe or the US map or something like that with only two players. It's just so open that it's still fun. But you, I, in Ticket Ride person, like I want there to be like the kind of stress of like worrying that someone's going to take 
the route that you need to get to that one city. Right. And in so in Tinker Nordic Countries, that happens in a two-player game where it doesn't happen that often in the ones with the bigger maps. So honestly, all ticket rides are great. They're yeah. all very, very similar ultimately. Tinker Ride Nordic Countries also has got kind of like a Christmassy theme. Yeah. Which I enjoy. Because like it just kind of it's fun. Scandinavian and stuff like that. So this is our favorite one, but like ultimately Ticket Ride, all of them are great, but Ticket Ride Nordic Country is one that we have because we usually play two to three players, so it makes the most sense it's for just us. It's kind of ideal, but yeah, all ticket to rides are, are fantastic. So we had to include in our list, like yep. literally, there's so many in just the 2000s. Again, starting with Ticket to Ride, Ticket to Ride Europe from here, Ticket to Ride Markland. Some of like the highest regarded Ticket to Rides are, are from those kind of early days. Yeah. Uh, Markland is can, fantastic. I can, it's yeah, like I a game that. within yeah. a game, yeah. so it's really fun. Yeah. That's what I hear. That's what I understand. So it's like, that's what's cool about the Ticket to Ride series is they've done a lot of cool things throughout the years with uh, the, this kind of foundation they've built of kind of collecting these cards, playing these cards to build routes with trains. Uh, and then each version has like a little something that it does with it that's a little bit different. Yeah. So it's kind of like a take your pick with Ticket to Ride. Um, they're all really enjoyable. Yeah. So yeah. that's why it's our number two. two. Yeah. We have number ones for Board Game Geek and us. So What's let's go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks right now. So the number one from Board Game Geek is number nine overall. Still in the top ten. This is not my list for BGG. I just feel like I'm, I'm just I'm just hating on every single one of the games. <laughs> That's okay. This game is from 2005. It's Twilight Struggle. Speaking of two-player games. One of the worst games ever made. No, oh my God. it's objectively it's objectively a good game. I just I do not like it. But yeah, I just I, man, it's, I'm sorry, viewers. Uh, this is not my list apparently for VGG. Hey, <laughs> that's that's I'm like God, I don't like any of these. You don't games. have to apologize for your game taste. Uh, <laughs> I don't have quite so strong negative feelings. We've played Twilight Struggle. It's one that I want to come back to in the app form. There's a digital implementation. I would like to maybe give that a go. But this game is 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 all about the Cold War. Yeah, uh, you're playing uh, the U.S. versus the Soviets, and you are trying to you're vying for control. Uh, on the on this world map, you're trying to uh, win the space race, and you're playing all these cards either for action points or for the event that's listed on there. They're real events from this era, uh, and you're kind of moving through time and trying to basically win the Cold War, which yeah. is a you know kind of like all these war games. They're super interesting because I like that they're based in history, uh, yeah. and that's a very satisfying. It's thing. It's a very cool game to like learn a lot about that. Yeah, that time. It's very, very cool. Yeah, it's just one of those things where it's like these kinds of games are super not my kind of game. And right. so, like, I went into it being like, I'm, I'm gonna try because it's like those all like, it's like I tried Ti4. It's like you know we talk, want to talk about like, oh, I want to try Grickly because it's like one of those things where I'm like, I'm ninety percent sure I'm not gonna like this, but I want to try it because sure. I. I know it's objectively a very good game. I just don't think I personally am going to like it. And I didn't. I really didn't like yeah, it. But I was just like, okay, I can see why people do love this game. Yeah. Yeah. Steph, I can't remember, Seth, have you played yeah. Twilight Struggle? No, it's just, it's intimidating and it's not yeah. exactly my theme, my style of game that I generally enjoy. So it's, it's not off the table, but it's not one that I'm like, hey, let's play. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. I think that's kind of why I want to try it again, but in a digital format so that it moves along, you know, I can maybe play against an AI and not be worried that I'm like taking up someone else's time. I just fail my way to learning the game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what, that's, yeah, basically. You know what I mean? It's like, because a like, lot of it comes down to those cards and that, and that yeah. this game is very important. Like this certain card is going to be really good in this specific scenario and yeah, and you just kind of have to play almost like chess. You have to kind of memorize to some yeah. degree. I've heard it described that way, uh, which doesn't necessarily make me want to play it more. But you have to like know like this <laughs> sure card. Doesn't. You got to wait for this exact thing and then throw it down for this like maximum effect. And yeah. uh, with an app, I think maybe I'd be able to like yeah. actually start to learn that a little. Like I said, more. for me, it's like something like Through the Ages is a great example of this. It's like that's a game where it's like I can learn the rules, but I will not know what's going on until I play it a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I don't yeah, want to have to do that. Physically, where I'm playing against people, just losing. I'll, I'll do that with an AI though, especially because I can play it quicker. And sure. I'll basically just fail until I understand the game. Like I'm honestly fine <laughs> with doing that. And sometimes, some of my try to struggle is a game I'd rather do that. I'd rather just play against an AI, and I can just be like and slowly learn it as yeah. I just get destroyed by the AI. That's fair. But hey, that's number one. Uh, Twilight Struggle has been in the top ten for a good long while. Yeah, it's, it's a number classic, one for a long time. Yeah, bona fide classic game. Uh, especially because for like, it was kind of like war type games, it's more accessible than. You know, it can get they can get way deep into those types of games, yeah. but this one is has always kind of been the 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 gold standard one for people to hop yeah. into. So Twilight Struggle, still very highly regarded. It's number one from the two thousands for Board Game Geek, but we got a number one that we did mention before on Board Game Geek's list. So let's talk about it now. Our number one is 
47 overall from 2008. Uh, Lahav. 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 You know what's funny is that I actually learned Lahav on the app. <laughs> so the, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really funny that it's you say all that, yeah, but it, yeah. is, it is easier to see all the cards displayed because when somebody buys a card in this game, it goes to their side. So it's like, it might be hard to see exactly all your options at the, any given moment uh, when yeah. you take a turn. So um, yeah, it, it, the app, learning on the app is very helpful. And um, it's, it's now probably my go-to app game when I'm traveling because it is a long game. I mean, it's, it usually yeah. still takes like a 45 to an hour, even on the app. It's just like- For an app, that's incredibly long. It's yeah. just incredibly <laughs> long. I mean, I could just do this, 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 and I probably know the game a lot better than when I was first learning and playing it a whole bunch. But yeah, it's just, it's such a great game. Uva Rosenberg. And it, it, every time you move, new things will get populated on the board. And then, well, now there's like seven wood there. Maybe I take the wood as my action, but I don't want to do that. I want to take this action over here and do this instead. And you only ever get one thing to do on your turn. And then it's up yeah. to turn. And then it will be gone probably by the next time. So... Yeah, yeah, it's definitely it's, it's, one of those that does that with like, what do I do with the time and, and based off of what's available right now, do I change my plan and go for this opportunity? Do I stick to my plan? Uh, that, that's I struggle there because I, I get very like, there's a lot of wood, I should get that. I'm like, do you even need, do you, need do you ever wood? need wood? I don't know, but I want it because there's a ton there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot to explore for sure. And there's always good choices too. You yeah. know, it's like, and that's one thing that's always nice. It's like, if you're going to have it where you're gonna pull me in a bunch of different directions and make it difficult. At least make them. There's nothing worse when you get there. You get to a point in a game and you're like, "Cool, I have nothing to do. worthwhile to do." <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. a bad design decision. Right. Yes. <laughs> and so it's like with a hob, there's always like, "Oh, there's always something good to do." It may not be exactly what you wanted, but there's always something good to do, which yes. is a very good thing. Yeah. Yeah. And the the idea of like everyone owning these buildings and I can go use my opponent's buildings, but I have to pay them. It's mm -hmm. just something that's really cool. Um, and does work well, Steph. I agree in the app where you can kind of get a good view of everything is nice to be able to kind of zoom in yeah, on right? on this versus someone sitting far across the table. But Lahab is just super, uh, super cool. It feels solid. Uh, it's like, you know, very kind of an Uwe Rosenberg game, but because you're not on a farm and stuff, it feels a bit different feels the way different. things work and your ships hey, are moving no through. no peat bogs. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I know, like, right? You know, it's, that. There's some overlap <laughs> there, but then it's its own thing. Laha feels a little bit different. Um, and the app is a, a great way to learn. That's how I learned as well. So Excellent. So good. Yeah. So good. <laughs> it's just a good one, y'all. Uwe had a good, good Uwe, decade there. He's still having a good decade. I'm yeah, Uwe's doing just fine. <laughs> just fine. Uh, so oh, that man. is our list versus Board Game Geek's list. You, the Woo. people of Board Game Geek, of course, can go rank your games, games you've played. Uh, you can talk about and learn about games that you're interested in, all on Board Game Geek. So we encourage you to go and explore the site because there's all sorts of categories of games. There's families of games. We were talking about wanting to do like uh, games from a certain country in the future. Yeah. There's families that have like this country or Portugal and things. <laughs> so you can search all sorts of ways to find maybe yeah. games that are interesting and then you can see other games that maybe will have some similarities mm -hmm. in terms of me mechanisms and stuff yeah. like that. So we encourage you, of course, to check out Board Game Geeks and then rank your games because you can impact where things appear on a future list that we do. In theory, we could do this list a year from now and be very different awesome. based off of what y'all rate these games. Yeah. Which is super duper cool. Um, anything I think else? that's it. I think that's it. Well, awesome. Thanks so much for joining yeah. us for another Top 10 versus 10. Steph, we appreciate you. Thank you so You're much. Uh, until next time, I have been Mike. I'm Nick. And I'm Steph. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye, everybody. Bye.